webinar to make sure that your cameras are off and also that your mic is muted. For those people who aren't familiar with Teams, let me just maximise my screen. So some of you will be able to see yourselves now. Uh, on the floating bar in the middle here, uh, which is the meetings bar, you need to make sure that your camera has a line through it. That means the camera is turned off and also that your mic is muted. I won't mute mine, otherwise you won't be able to uh, hear me. <clears throat> we'll talk a little bit further about how that bar works as we go through this afternoon, but that's just to get started. If any of you haven't found it yet, over here on the side, there is a meeting chat. In the meeting chat, we've got Ellie on the call with us from Turn It On, and she's popped in there a link, which I'm just hovering over, and that links out to something called a Microsoft form. And in the Microsoft form, you can place your questions that you might have during the session. We're also going to open it up at the end of the session so you can ask any questions you like regarding using Teams for governors, and I'll do my best to answer them. If you just pop them in that link, and then I can read them from there at the end, and we'll all be able to unmute our mics and also talk to each other at the same time. Just before I begin, uh, give anyone an opportunity to quickly unmute by pressing the button in the middle. Is there anything that you urgently need to tell us or ask us or anything you think you need to get from the session that you need to let me know? OK. I'm going to move over to the main presentation. It won't all be a presentation. It'll be quite interactive at the same time, so we'll go through. As far as what you can expect from today's session, we are purely going to focus on running meetings using Teams with governors. Now, I know that I've got quite a diverse audience on this session. Some people are really experienced with using Teams. They use it all the time in work or because they're in education themselves. Uh, and others of you on this call haven't touched Teams before. This is very much your first or your second go at it, and you just want to find out a little bit more of how it's going to work. So just going to flag now, we're going to focus on some of the narrow features that Teams can deliver in the way of holding meetings. It is capable of much, much more, but we aren't covering that this afternoon. But if you have a particular aspect that you wish to ask a question about, please pop it into the form in the chat or ask me at the end. So first of all, we'll go through, well, why use Teams at all? We'll have a brief look at creating teams. We're then going to look at running the remote meetings, which will be the main points for the session. We'll also look at some other features you might find useful uh, in Teams itself. And we'll have a really quick look at what we call the accessibility tools, which makes Teams accessible regardless of who you are and what you wish to do with it. And then, as I said, at the end, we'll go through some questions and answers. So the question I always get asked is, why on earth should I use Teams in school or for governor's meetings? Uh, and that usually comes back to one question, and that's, well, what is Teams itself? Because people are usually baffled when they're presented with it, because it can be so many things to so many people. Trying to encapsulate that in one short description can be quite tricky, but the way I normally describe it is it's a single space for collaboration. You don't have to roam off to other apps or other tabs in your web browser. Everything is contained within Teams itself. The other way of looking at it is it's a hub and it brings together all of the features that are in Office 365. And most frequently, people would use Office 365 Outlook email. You might use other aspects of it for your work life or for governance in your school, but everything can happen inside the Teams app. And you don't need to go, again, leaving the one app to find another app or having to branch out and use another application itself. The other great bit of information is that it's available on practically every device you can imagine. Whether it's a desktop computer or a tablet or any type of mobile phone. Also, if you happen to be using a Chromebook because your work is maybe Google based, you can open it up in practically any web browser now. If you own a Mac, until recently it didn't run quite so nicely in Safari, but it does now. So, whichever piece of technology you've got in your home, you can use it. There are more features in the web browser version and the computer versions than there are in the apps that you would put onto a tablet or a mobile phone. So there might be a few things that you can do on the computer that you can't manage to do on a mobile phone or a tablet, but they do have most of the features across the platform. 
If you're going to be using Teams itself, one of the things that we need to consider, first of all, is just the setup that you require. Hopefully, if you're on this call, you've already got a governor account in Office 365. But if you want to roll out the use of Teams for meetings with all your governors, you'll need to make sure that they all have an Office 365 account within your school. That can be achieved by asking someone like turn on as your technical support, or you may have somebody internally that has access to Office 365 and what's called the admin console to make email accounts. Quickly and easily get them set up and best to add them to a group called governors, and then you can manage them as a team of email addresses and set the appropriate restrictions or allowances and permissions so that people can get on with the job of governing and not have to worry about the technology they're using. Also, you need to set expectations such as etiquette between calls. So if someone is working and sharing like I am now, that mics are muted, that cameras aren't left on, we're all getting used to this new world of home working temporarily. And if you have your mic is unmuted, we've quite often got children around or there's other people in the house. Someone might go and boil the kettle or the washing machine starts up and it could all be really distracting. So just the meeting etiquette normally is the person that's presenting or the person that's talking has their mic on or their camera on if they want to be bold. And then the rest of the people in the meeting have theirs off. When we come to look in a minute about presenting and creating a, a team, you need to have a team to present a meeting in the first place. There's four different types of teams. We're not going to worry too much about all of them and what they do, but the one that you are recommended to create for governors is a PLC, which is a professional learning community, which is meant for people like governing bodies. You could also equally use the other team, but I often find that the PLC, the professional learning community works best. You can set them up just primarily for communication. Uh, quite a few governing bodies that I've worked with have adopted platforms such as Governor Hub, and that's quite readily used for files. So you don't have to st stop using those different hubs. You don't have to suddenly put everything into Teams. Teams can lend itself quite easily just for the meeting feature alone and allow you to have those virtual meetings, but still do everything else in the way that you've always done it. There's also, as I said, the consideration of what technology people are using at home. So that the mobile app versus the computer versus the desktop uh, web app, which is the one in the web browser. And just think about if any of those are going to cause a problem for someone joining the meeting. If you're about to do something and that feature is not available, they'll soon let you know about it. Trust me. But you might need to just think it through on the first couple of meetings as everybody beds in and gets used to using Teams professionally. So in a moment, we're going to go through really briefly how to create a team. It's not the main focus of today, but I wanted to show you. And then we'll go about it through how to use the meeting features in Teams once you're in there. So you may be presented with a window that looks like this, or you may be presented with certain teams that you're already members of. So if you were the chair of governors, you might join a senior leadership team as well. There could be a team for that. So when you press the Create Team button, you'll quickly end up at a screen where you get the four options that I uh, showed you just a moment ago. You'd be interested in picking the second one from the left, which is the PLC, and then you start to set it up. So instead of just presenting that to you, I'm going to show you that in real time using a demonstration team that I have ready. So because I've got a few teams that I already use, I don't have that blank screenshot I showed you, but I want to show you that so it didn't throw you the first time you used it. If you already have teams available to you, you might need to get the IT administrator in your school to give you permission to create teams so that governors can do that. Or maybe it's just the chair of governors that's given that. But you would go up here to the top corner if it's not over here as a, as a join and create team there. So you press the button there. You get to the window that I had. If you wanted to invite governors, you can create a code and you can invite your governors. And again, your IT support can help you with that. If you know what you're doing with Teams, you might be able to organize that yourself. But most likely, you're going to be creating a team. So you press the Create Team button. And it's as simple as choosing the option that says Professional Learning Community. Up comes the box. So I'll call this Test Governors. You give it a description, so you put a description there, and then you've got an option to make it private or public. For the fact this is a governor's team, 
choose private. That means that members of the governing body can see it and the head teacher in the school, for instance. Or if you're working in an academy, there may be someone from the academy staff that joins the governance team. But if you leave it to public, any member of staff or anyone that's using Teams for the school will also be able to see it. So it's a really important point to labour there that make sure you choose private. Then all you do is press next. And when you get to next, it will go through creating the team and then you choose to add the people that you want. So I'm in a, a test environment here. So I'm going to start typing some letters of people that might be in my team. Uh, let's try another one. <clears throat> And of course, with the best laid plans, it doesn't work. There we go. So I can see there that this is an American set of users here. So I've got the principal of my school, who's Patty Fernandez, but I've also got Deborah Berger, who's a teacher. So maybe she's a teacher governor. I would add them in by clicking on their name and then I press add and they get added underneath. And then all you do is you press down here, goes from skip to finalize and finish and you end up with a team. I'm not going to create the whole thing because it clutters everything up. But what I will do is go to one that I've prepared earlier in a Blue Peter style. Oh, there is test governors. It's made one down there. But up here, I've got my governor's demo team that I've made previously. So we're just going to go into that. So if you want to go into the team, it's pretty straightforward. Just click it and then the view will change slightly. You'll be presented with a layout that is standard to all teams. So whether you use these for work, whether you're involved in other teams in the school because you're a teacher, or whether you're just using this for governor's purpose, this layout will not change. It will stay like this. Down the side, you've got some shortcuts to the apps. You don't need to worry too much about all of the options down there. The one that we'll focus on in a minute is calendar because we'll use it for setting meetings. Down the side here, you've got what's called channels. And then over the top here, you've got tabs. The one tab that you're probably going to use a fair bit is posts. So you can change between the tabs by clicking on them. Don't worry too much about files because, as I said earlier, most governors have got their files stored in something like Governor Hub or you've got another system for using it. But you have posts and that's an area to post messages to the other members of the governing body. And I've just popped one in there saying, welcome to uh, turn it on for governors. And then how do you use Teams posts? If I want to make another one, the key to it is the bar down the bottom here. There's lots of options. But to get the full formatting options down in the bottom left hand corner where you've got the A with a paintbrush, if you click that, you'll get a pop up box that appears and it will give you some options to format the text. It also allows you to add other features. So we'll go through and make a test one. So we're going to say full governor's meeting. And we're going to say, please see the agenda in the linked document. And I want to make this really obvious, so I'm going to go up to where it says new conversation. There's a drop down. I can start a new conversation or I can make what's called an announcement. So it puts in a headline bar. So I'm going to put there important. Please read. And clearly this afternoon I also can't type. You could also made us stand out even more. You can change the colors of the backgrounds down here or you can actually put in a background so you can upload your own image if you've got a school logo you can also choose one of the images there so i might say that it's going to be that one click done and then it changes my background i've mentioned there about please see the link file because one of the things you can do when you post you can either put the agenda here within the body of the message and a lot of people do that for governor's meetings but also it's quite complicated you might want to attach a separate document so you press the little paperclip icon here at the bottom and then it gives you an option. You can choose from your OneDrive or you can choose out of the documents that are there. I'm just going to press that again because that flashed past pretty quickly. So that allows you to choose from your OneDrive if you use Office 365. If you don't know what OneDrive is, do not worry about it. You're more than likely going to be using Upload from my computer. You press that button. Then it looks at all the files on your computer. So you can see the files there in my downloads folder. You choose one. So I'm just going to choose the, the guide there for that. You press open 
and then it would upload it and attach it to your meeting at the bottom so that anyone looking at it could either open it up in Teams because they don't need to download it to read it, or they could take a copy and download it if they wish. The time that it takes for that document to upload is really determined by the speed of your broadband at home. We're often all now working on broadband that was meant for home use and is not meant for business use. So if you're starting to attach some quite big files here, maybe they're PowerPoint presentations, it can take a little bit longer just to upload them, but just wait for that green bar to go along. That document I've just attached is quite a huge document about using Teams. Down the bottom as well, you've got other features you might want to use sparingly. Remember, this is a professional community uh, and the governors are governing the educational organisation that they're involved with. But you can, if you want to make it a little bit, light, little bit more lighthearted, you can use emojis. Depending on your governing body and how established you are, you may think that's appropriate, you may not. That's a discussion for you within your own governing body. Down here you have GIFs as well. I don't recommend using GIFs in a governor's meeting, but if you typed happy, it would then bring up all of the little videos, the GIF videos that are to do with the word happy, and you can choose one and it will put it into the body of the message. Just because I'm uploading the document at the same time and I'm also presenting over Teams, it's just not gonna show you those, but it might be someone with a happy face. It might be a clip from a film and something else. Down here, you've got options to put in stickers. They can be quite popular. They're also animated when they go in, so you, you can pop those in if you want to praise someone. Maybe someone's contributed in a way that's made the governing body's life a lot easier. Maybe they're helping the staff in school. You can also turn this into a meeting, so you don't need to go to another meeting. If you click the button at the bottom, you can press Meet Now. So that's one way to organise governor's meetings is direct from the posts but we'll also show you another way in a moment to do that. Another great feature in here is the praise feature. So you can choose people to praise in your organization and then you can issue them praise about something that they've been doing. So it works a little bit like stickers too. The dot, dot, dots in the Microsoft world are quite important because they often hide other apps. So these are apps that you can pop in. So something that some governors use are forms. They are just like a paper form, but in the electronic world, and you can collect information in them. And that's what we're using today for you to collect your questions. You could also embed videos. So maybe there's a good practice video about something that's changed with governance. And you can just embed that video from YouTube straight into the post. I'm going to keep mine quite simple today. My file failed to upload purely because I'm presenting now at the main time. You go to the bottom right hand corner where it looks like a paper aeroplane or an arrow and you press send. And all that does is it adds it into the feed and you can see there it just becomes a conscious stream of everything that the governors are sharing with each other. You might need to again work on etiquette of use. If you have too many people popping in everything and anything, it becomes a bit cluttered and meaningless. So you may want to keep it to subcommittees or main governing body meetings or important announcements or maybe something linked to COVID-19 or school closure currently. You can do that because I've made an announcement. That's why I've got like the loud hailer or the speaker up there. <coughs> and it's up to you how you choose to use it. If you want to change something after you've posted it, let me do that again. You can hover over it and you'll see all of the likes and the emojis, but you've got the dot, dot, dots. Another reason why I say they're quite important is they hide a lot of things. That opens up another menu. If you've posted something in error, which does happen, you can delete it. You can also edit it as well. So if you want to go back in and change something, you realise there's a, a point you missed or another member of the governing body has contributed an idea and you want to make sure it's in there, you click edit and then you're back in edit mode. And when you want to repost it, just press the send button again and it will go out and then you will end up with it in the messages again. Mine's just going to hesitate about going back out. So that is posts. Posts can be used in all those different ways. Really important for communication. Sometimes good for meetings. Again, if you're converting it into a meeting using that button and it wants me to type something to continue. So I'm just going to put something in there. Uh, point two. Send that. Another feature to set meetings, and this will most likely be the way that you do set meetings, is to use the calendar function over here on the side where I'm waving my little presenter finger around now. If you click that, it will take you to a different window in Teams. But if you're worried, oh no, I've lost where I was, all you do is click back over here to Teams 
And here's my governor's team. I'm exactly where I left off. Nothing's changed. It's all fine. So I'm quickly going to pop back to calendars over here on the left. And this is your personal Outlook calendar that's attached to your email address. Nobody else is going to see what's in this calendar unless you invite them to join a meeting. So it's your personal calendar, exactly the same as the calendar that you would view from your email normally. And that's just presented in Teams to save you having to go off and open up another tab in your web browser up here at the top, find your email and find your calendar. It's just all in one place. It's what I meant by it being a hub of collaboration. So let's say tonight we were going to have our governor's meeting. It's at four o'clock. So I'm going to click on the four o'clock space in my calendar. It opens up a calendar meeting. So I'm going to put full governors attended uh, people that are attended to meet or required to attend and meet. You just need to invite them. So I'm going to see if I can find Patty Fernandez. There she is. I want her as the head of the school. I'm also going to find my link teacher governor, Governor Rogers. Uh, let's see if I can get Rogers to go. Uh, don't want Rosie Patterson. So you might, depending on how your school's been set up, get other other results in there. So you be really careful if it says student. I'm going to invite. Let's try another teacher beginning with G. Let's see if I can get someone in here. There is George Potter. Let's say he's another teacher governor. And your members of your governing body would also appear in there as you type. You can also invite people from outside your organization if that function is turned on. But from a GDPR perspective, governors should all be using school email addresses. And also that will be required to get the full functionality out of the team. So if you haven't already got school email addresses for your governors, you will need to set them up or get somebody to set them up on your behalf. I can see down here, this isn't an April Fool's. I do want people to meet at four o'clock today. Uh, it puts things into your calendar in half hour blocks. So I'm going to say at the moment, I want to extend that and drop down the box on the side. I'm going to make it a one hour meeting. And it also shows you there it's one hour on the side. If you wanted to that be a repeating feature, so you wanted it to be every month, you could choose monthly and then it saves you. And on the first of every month, it would put it into the calendar. Everyone that you've added up here would also get it in their calendar and it would save you doing this over and over again. So it, it makes the way that you work smarter. You can also add it into a channel in the team so it appears as a notification in the channel. So I'm going to put it into my governor's channel. Uh, I'm going to put it into governor's general team and I'm also going to put it into the general channel. I'll come back to what channels are in just a moment. You'd add a location if you're working in the physical world so you can put a certain room in your school once we get out of remote working. You can also set another agenda in the actual meeting itself. So you can add it in there, you can attach, you can highlight, you can format, you can put tables in. There's lots of options about what goes in here. Once it's all set up, you just press send. After send, it will add it in. You'll see if it's pretty pale, but in the bottom right corner, there's a circle going around. Well, that's appointed. That can take up to a minute for that to happen, depending on how busy Microsoft servers are. But once it's in there, you'll see it as a darker block. And then all the governors will also get it in their calendar at the same point. You say, well, that's all well and good, Martin, but that's just an appointment. We want to have a meeting here. So once it's approved as a meeting, you should see it back here in our team. So they have two options. They can click on the meeting inside the posts link. So there is my full governor's post that I put in before. There was my welcome. Here is the meeting I've just created. Nobody can say that they've missed it because it's gone to their calendar and it's also gone into their posts as well. And you can get to that meeting by clicking the link here and it will take you straight to the meeting. You can also get to it by going over to your calendar. So if you were looking at your calendar, my calendar is still finishing off there. You can click on the link there and in the top right hand corner where I've got the, the no entry sign, you get a little pop up button that says join where you can join the meeting. I'm going to do it just from over here in conversations. So in the posts, I've got it there. I'm going to click on it. It opens it up. And up here in the top button, I've got their join. I would only see the options to amend the meeting if I'm the meeting creator. Everyone else would just get a join button. So I'm seeing this because I am the person that scheduled the meeting. I pop in join. 
you might get asked the first time for your web browser to have access to your microphone and your camera. It's for legitimate reasons and you can't use Teams for meetings otherwise, so you need to press allow. And then it will let you into your meeting. So you can now see me in my meeting and you need to enable your microphone, sorry, disable your microphone initially when you join the meeting and disable your camera and you press join now. I can't join another meeting because I'm already in a meeting presenting to you and it would just shut off the camera that I've got working. But when you join that meeting, you'd see something very similar to what I've been showing you. You see all thumbnails. If I stop presenting a moment out of my meeting and I go back to the team, uh, if I go back to the presentation the meeting I'm going to stop sharing my desktop a minute everybody would see this you would see each other joining and I often get asked a question about why do I only see four people it's just the way that Microsoft have got teams set up you see four thumbnails really that's to save if you've got home broadband or if you're working slow connection it's simply it can't be overwhelming your broadband so if you had more than four people in they all had their video on and their audio on that's quite a bit of demand on the computer and also your broadband connection so by having four it limits the stress on your broadband if you need to speak to other people they'll all be listed along the bottom here so you can click on someone and bring them up we show four people that have spoken last so when you unmute your mic and you speak you'll become one of these four people pinned up here. If you haven't spoken for a while, you'll gradually get shunted off the list. But the minute you speak again, you get promoted back up to being one of the four. I'm just going to share my desktop again. So coming back in to my meeting, here is my governor's meeting and in the meeting. Something I wanted to really clearly emphasize is that governor's meetings should not be recorded. So though I'm recording today, you shouldn't be recording your meetings. What you can do is you can make notes. So one of the other features I wanted to show you over here, you've got something called a PLC notebook. If you used an others team, it would just be called notebook. Click on it and it does what it says on the tin. It is just a notebook, exactly the same as having a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen, except it's in the web browsers. So a lot of people are using Teams for meetings, find it's really useful to have the clerk to governors in the notebook and they can be typing up the notes for the meeting in the notebook which means they're available to the governors afterwards they're all in one place but if you need to export a copy and send it out to governors hub you can do that. I think because of my broadband i am really suffering today it's not going to show you that notebook but i'll just let it sit there for a moment while i explain something over to the left i said i would explain channels to you by default, whenever you create your governor's team, you'll have what's called a general channel. If you don't create any more channels, it can not be deleted, it can't be tampered with, it is standard and it exists in every Microsoft team. You can add more channels. So I've had here, I'm going to say I'm using my governor's team, but the general channel is going to be for everyone and for full governing body meetings. And I'm not going to create a separate full governing body channel. I am going to create a second subcommittee channel and it's there. And if I clicked on the subcommittee, the subcommittee has its own posts. So if you needed subcommittee members to speak with each other, they could contain their posts in there and away from the main posts, which is over here in the general channel. But you could equally just leave it as general and not have any other channels there. If you want to make one, it's up here. You click the button and you press add channel and then you can make one if you wish. A lot of governing bodies just stick with general on its own. So I'm going to go back to my notebook. Hopefully it will have loaded up now. This is my notebook. The key thing to get you started is this arrow up here in the top corner. It brings up these things here are called sections. So they are like if you were thinking in terms of a leverage file, they're like the cardboard colored dividers you might find between the pieces of A4 paper. The pages are the pieces of A4 paper, and then you can add more pages by pressing add page or add section. So if I wanted to add a page for full governor's meeting, uh, I put the title in there. When I put the title in, it names the document, and then I might put meeting started 
and hopefully it's going to be four o'clock if everyone's here promptly and so forth and then i just type away i can use it like a like a normal type document if i've got a stylus i can also draw on top as well so there's a lot of functionality here about you could add pictures in you can insert also insert all sorts of other media such as videos but you don't have to get into that if you don't wish to you can simply use it for typing messages if you want to get back to that it's press the arrow here there is my page called full governors at the moment that's in what's called the overview but i might have actually decided i wanted to put that in meeting minutes because that's a section and then in here there are some pre-created sections when you use these but you could just add in the other page so there you can just go again meeting minutes and as soon as you name it here it names the page over there as far as today was concerned it was really keeping it to that sort of level and keeping it very basic in the way that you want to handle meetings. I'm just going to show you a couple of pointers from the presentation. This presentation, don't worry, will be available after, as will the guides that I've been discussing. So for all those people thinking, where on earth do I get these materials? We'll make sure that if you're on this call, you'll get a copy of the presentation. You'll also get a copy of the support documents. You'll get a copy of the governor's guide that turned on is specifically written to help governors with engaging with teams for the first times to have governor's meetings. Our managing director has prepared that for today. So this really is just an overview for anyone that's not familiar. You won't need that if you've used Teams for work, but some people may just need to know what each piece does. There is an ability to record events. Again, I put on there, do not record meetings, but sometimes it might be a particular piece of training for governors and it's really useful to record that training. And when you record it, it goes into something called Microsoft Stream. Don't want to labor that too much, but if that's something you want to get into, I could have a chat with you after the session individually about that, or we can put on another separate session if you want to know that. Governor training is often something that's difficult to get everyone to because of commitments outside of being a governor. So if you've recorded that training, then it can be available for them to access at whatever time they wish. We've given you some links here in this presentation. So we've got Transferring, transforming learning with staff teams that also applies to governors It's a very general introduction to teams and you've also got an even more beginner's guide general introduction to teams so if you get this presentation you need to click the little icons here they will open up a tab in your web browser and you can go on to something called the MEC, which is the Microsoft Education Community. And there are online courses that you can take there if you want to. And it also gives you guides of how to use Teams. We've got something called the Teams directory. So if you were maybe a chair of governors and you're grappling with setting this up and you've got a question, you can go into the Teams directory. It is the font of all Teams knowledge. You can either search by typing in something you're interested in or you can use the index in there. If you want to use OneNote, we have also got a guide to getting started with OneNote here. Again, it will take you through it. It will give you guides from Microsoft. And then down at the bottom, we've got the TIO Governor's Simple Guide for getting started with using Teams for Governor's Meetings. So I would say if you're going to get started, you're going to need to create a team for your governors. You're going to need to decide the structure of your team that you wish governors to use. I would trial it first before you start on a full governor's meeting and have a simple test meeting or something where a few committee members have a go just to see how it works. Then try making some general announcements in the post, just like the ones I showed you, rather than emailing to each other. So you can start to use email less and have your communication about meetings or important information relating to meetings in the posts. And then if you feel brave, you can try using OneNote to capture your meeting minutes or capture important information for the meetings. I am going to, at this point, stop screen sharing, uh, have a look at the questions that have been sent in, but also this is an opportunity for you to unmute your mics. Ellie, if you've had any questions that have come in at this point, uh, Ellie from Turn It On, please feel free to unmute and also join in. So I'm going to throw the questions open to everyone in the meeting and I'll do my best to answer them. absolute silence you might need I'm to just unmute your sorry. mic on the meetings bar in the middle here if you need to ask a question otherwise we won't be able to hear you martin hello can you hear me i can yes hi martin it's tim kid here from long crendon school um, hello could you, could you hi um thank you for that that was very useful there's just one thing that i'm 
um, not wholly clear on. And that's how actually you get the governors into the team in the first place. You mentioned, I think, at the beginning about needing Office 365 account and all that sort of stuff. Can you give a bit more detail on that? Yeah, absolutely. I'm just going to reshare my desktop for everyone a moment. If I go back into the test team here, so, so I would say unless you are really keen or you've got a career in IT outside of the school, uh, I would ask your IT support company or whoever the key person is in school to make the Office 365 accounts. You need access to what's called the admin centre. So if I swap tabs here, you'd need to have that little app there appear in your office 365 account which doesn't by default apart from high level administrators that's where the new governor's accounts would be made inside there and there's thousands of options about where to go so that's why we say unless you're someone who's it background get somebody else to do it raise the support ticket once they're created you as chair of governors or whoever it is makes the team so they will become the owners one of the things i wasn't going to overwhelm people with but you i'll show you is on the dot dot dots here you've got an option called manage team you click it and the tabs along the top change from the default ones called posts and files etc and the very first tab you get there are members of that governance team you don't see yourself anywhere else when you're creating it because you are the person making it but you would appear as one of the owners i changed after i made the principal in this fictional scenario a member i changed her status and i also made her an owner because the head teacher of the school really should be able to get that sort of access so when you add people they'll be a member but you might want to change certain people to being owners and then down here you can also see Deborah Berger is my teacher governor. So she's just a member, which means she can use the team. But what she can't do is intrinsically change its structure, like adding these additional channels. That would be only the owners that could do that. If you want to add another member because you forgot them, one of the easiest ways to do it is to click add member here, then search for their name. So let's try G. Have I got any G's? But yeah you you get the idea there it brings up deborah again but you click the person and you press add they'd appear in the list and close and then they just appear as another member down there so that's how you add people in after you've created the team does that help at all yeah that does do it. it's great to know i can ask someone else to do okay. it because i don't work in it so thank you okay no problem at all any other questions i haven't had any submitted using the link so i'm quite happy just to take them now on the discussion i'm just going to stop sharing my desktop a minute hi yeah i've got a question it's kay from swanbourne church of england i'm one of the governors and Hello. i wondered hi um what are the costs involved with this that is the best thing about it and i should have emphasized that a few times over sorry just taking a sip of water uh all of this is free to the school there are no additional costs whatsoever so because the school has office 365 you yeah. can create the governor accounts for free and you can then start using teams for free there is no cost or restrictions to the amount of meetings you can make or the length of the meetings or any of the features i've shown you they are all included in part of the school's Office 365 tenancy, as it's called, which is just the Office 365 setup that the school already has. So no additional costs whatsoever. OK, that's great. And if we wanted to get you to set up the um, sort of IT side of it and say we've got about 24 governors and we wanted to have like um, a full governing meeting and separate, say, two or three sub meetings, what sort of price would you um, charge for that? So, again, if you've got to uh, turn it on for your technical support. We've got it for our GDPR. You've got it for GDPR. OK, so as, if it's a, as a bespoke request, I can send you a, a quote for after the call because it, it just depends, as, it, as I said, the amount of time. So if it's 24 governors, it won't take too long. Uh, but do you have an IT support company already or not? Um, I'd need to check that out because I'm I'm not sure what the current stage is. And also we've got um, an admin staff that she's pretty hot on a lot of things. So it might be that she can do that. Um, I just sort of wondered roughly really what we were talking about if we needed it. It would be hard to put an exact price on it on the call, but I'm more than happy to follow up with you individually as a one to one afterwards. OK. 
that's if that's fine. required at all, that's absolutely fine. And it's something we could facilitate for you. It would just be the cost of our time to do it. Uh, and we'd need access to the school's Office 365, obviously, to complete that. OK, that's lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? I'm just going to open up the chat on yeah. the side here and just see as well. There's a couple of questions in the chat, Martin. Um, okay. Was it Swanbourne um, who was just talking? Because I think you it do was. have them. Um, yeah, you, it yes, it was. You've got, I think you do have a tech support contract with us um, at the school. Lovely, so, thank uh, you. So yeah, it should be, Robert should be able to do that. That's great, thank you. Yeah. And Robert's on this call as well, uh, so he's hearing everything that you're saying, so that, that won't be a problem for to liaise with Robert. Just for any of our schools that have our technical support on here, someone in your school will have the ability to get what's to what's called the Turn It On to, um, Schools Portal, which is where you raise technical support tickets. So whoever that is in your school, your head will know. Get them to raise a support ticket for their turn it on consultant and your turn it on consultant will just do this work as part of their normal contract so there wouldn't be any additional con uh, uh, costs outside your contract for technical support if you already have us for technical support we really aren't trying to profit out of this at such a time have you any other questions two, two, open... two questions in the chat should you be able to see people's comments? Uh, no, not unless you've got someone like me at the moment. Uh, I'm opening it up. If I was screen sharing, you would be able to see the comments I'm looking at. If you want to see the comments, I'm just going to quickly screen share again, and you're in a Teams call. So something I said I would do is show you about the call. So I'm just going to open this window up here. This floating meetings bar in the middle is quite key to being able to manage your meetings. So at the moment, I've got a counter counting up in a red dot because we're recording this meeting. This button here enables or disables your mic, so you should be able to see me talking now. Uh, so that puts your camera on or your camera off, and I'll just get rid of that notification. This button here mutes and unmutes your mic. This button here shares your desktop. So it's got a cross through it because if I press that at the moment, it stops sharing your desktop. One of the features governors often want to use is being able to share something on their screen with the other governors in the meeting. So it, Teams does that free. You can share exactly what's on your screen. Just from a safeguarding and e-safety point of view, make sure you've minimized anything with sensitive information. And also whatever you've got as a, a background or a desktop on your computer is appropriate before you share someone and offend them or share something that should have been private. Uh, also, when you're using the call, if you do enable the video option over here, the dot, dot, dots come into play again. And there is an option here called blur my background. And what that does is it blurs the wall behind you. So if I minimize mine a minute and I go back to a live video feed so you can see me at the moment, you can see behind me, there's some sort of stripy wallpaper here in my house. If I went and took that off, you'll be able to see everything on the wall behind me. So you might have pictures up. You might have people coming and going behind you. We're all working and trying to find a space to communicate with each other and have these meetings. So blur my background. It's pretty much essential for cutting out the background video noise, not the audio noise, so that you don't have everything going on behind you and people can focus on you in the conversation you're having if you're going to leave your camera on. Then over here, you've got chats inside the team, so conversations are there. If you press it, down the side here, you'll see the meeting chat where everyone's putting their comments, uh, and then you can just see what's going on as far as people adding questions. So that's what's going on with that there. You wanted to see other participants in the conversation, you can also press it. One good way of stopping everyone, if they've all got their mics on and they're having a chat, you can play God and you can press mute all and that will stop everyone's microphone at once and it will switch them to mute. So if you've got people not listening to you or a lot of people that haven't got their microphones muted, you can use that option there. So I could do that to everyone in the conversation and you'll see if someone's got their microphone muted because you can see where above where I'm hovering, there's a microphone with a line through it. So that's really the communication bar in the middle there. And when you want to finish, you just press hang up, call at the end. That meeting bar is quite key to be uh, you being able to run a meeting and then share things from that bar itself. I'm just going to stop sharing my meetings window at the moment. Uh, I'm just going to go back to the questions. So that being able to see everyone's comments only if you've got to press the button on the side, then you can see the comments that people have made. Uh, 
when you add questions or comments, they appear here. So Ellie's done that. Was there another question, Ellie, that I've missed? Should you be able to see the clerk's job? Should you not? Should it not be the clerk's job to maintain a team? <sighs> is it a good question? You could make it the clerk's job because the clerk is obviously taking notes and organisational, but a lot of people in their role as chair of governors with the head tend to work with the clerk as well. And between the three of them, they tend to organise the team and, and make sure it's working as expected. It might be the clerk in the end that puts things in the post regarding notifications of upcoming meetings or sets a, a meeting up in the calendar. That could be part of the clerk's role. So it's really for you to decide as a school as to how you want to run that. Any other questions? There's just one from Phil, if you scroll Phil. down. Uh, can you illustrate me. channel notifications just to show how these can be set up so that people can get alerts in their info appointments? Yes, I can, Phil. Hold on a minute. <coughs> I'm just going to go back to my other team. Ah, my, my connection has locked up. <laughs> you do get this from time to time, especially when you're working from home. Uh, one moment, I'll just see if I can refresh my browser so that I can show the channel notifications. Uh, are there any other questions where I just try refreshing my browser? There's nothing else in the chat at the moment. Anybody wish to unmute their mic and ask? Hello, Martin. Hello. Hi. And could you confirm, did you say governors would need to have a school email address to use Teams? Yes, you will need to have a school email address, preferably from a GDPR point of view as well. The governors should have an email address. You can, uh, and again, this is a decision for the school, you can open it up so that governors could be invited into the governance team with external email addresses. However, that's not good practice and not something we would recommend as a company. So we recommend all the governors having a school specific email address and then using that for anything they participate in teams. Thank you. And is that something that um, your technical guys could set up for us? Because we don't currently use school email addresses for governors. Yeah, absolutely. So if, if whoever is in school raises a support ticket for create an email account for the governors, they would just need a list of governors names. So forename and surname and any specific role that you hold because they could put that in as your description and then they can just make you an account and what they would do is create a group in office 365 and the admin console probably called governors and then add you to that governors group because it just makes it easier to to set rules for you as a group if you needed certain permissions as a group of governors that maybe are different to let's say pupils then that can be just included on the group instead of adding it to each member individually. But that's something that Turn On Technical Support can help you with, not a problem at all. Great, thank you very much. I'm still struggling to get my broadband to refresh. The notifications is described in the document that we're going to send out, so it is there for you, but I would like to show you, but I just can't get the browser to refresh. I've still got audio, but I can't get the share to work again. Hello. Hello. Can I, I put it in through your web thing, but it doesn't seem to have been picked up. If okay, we hold on, I can check. On the post bit, does it automatically email people, or do they all have to log, log into Teams every so often to check that you haven't put anything up? That is the notifications that I was just trying to, sh to show you all. Unfortunately, I, I cannot get it to work at the moment. Uh, the notifications can be set on a team so that as you say, instead of having to have the faff of continually logging in to see if anything's happened in Teams, you can set Teams up so it notifies you and sends an email alert to your email account. Now, at first, most people tend to say, email me about new posts that go into the post channel, also about new meetings so that you're aware if there's a meeting you've got to attend. But then as time goes on, people tend to pair those back just to the essential notifications they require. But no, you don't have to go into Teams. It's not another job to have to do. You can just have it drop into your inbox. Because a lot of us, as you can appreciate, have already got three or four emails we're checking. Yeah. The governor one, we don't want something else as well, particularly. No, you could set up a forwarding rule on your governor's email account to forward those notifications out to your other email addresses as well. So that's something that Turn It On could help you with too. 
Brilliant. Thanks very much. Okay, no problem. Any other questions? I'm just trying to look at the two questions we had submitted online. Okay. I will stay on the call in case anyone wants to ask another question. I'm more than happy to field any questions that come in. But if you are happy and you've got everything you need, I want to thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate you've taken the time out of your busy day. I know a lot of you as governors have other responsibilities and jobs, and I know it isn't always easy to join. And if you want anybody on your governing body to get the recording afterwards, Ellie will be sending the recording out from this webinar so they can all watch this back and they will also be able to get access to the guides and the presentation too. So we'll support them as much as possible. So thank you very much for everyone attending. Have a safe day. And I'll remain on here just in case anybody wants to ask any other questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you, very much. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. I think I've left. Oh, what, Andrew?